Hey, g'day guys. So if you watched last uh, last week's video, we were out in the middle of um, camping in the bush and just uh, gave you a bit of an update on what's going on. Well, this is uh, this week we're going to have a bit of a chat about some of our highlights out in this country. So that uh, out there, that rock there is Ayers Rock or Uluru and those rocks there are called the Algas and uh, yeah, we're going to go and check it out. So uh, we're just going to give you a bunch of highlights of those and whatever else we find and that'll be this week's video. This is Matajulu waterhole. It's one of the few permanent or reliable waterholes at uh, Uluru. It's absolutely spectacular. Just got a bit of a breeze blowing up at the moment, but uh, prior to that, it was so quiet and peaceful down here. Just gorgeous. So apparently, the uh, local indigenous population, when they used to come here, they would they would camp down. I'll show you, sort of down that way between there and there. And you know, that, that, so what happens is the local animals are coming in here for their water, and so they would camp down that way. There's a couple of caves down there, and they would uh, block off that area so that the animals would get caught up here at the water water hole, and then they could come in and catch their taka, so they could have dinner. It's a beautiful spot. It's lovely and cool down here too, and it's got flies. Not bad. Not bad having flies. There you go. So we're hanging out out here for sunset. Going to watch the sun go down over the Olgas or Katachuka. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, so we just went for a walk up that canyon there. Beautiful. Wind blowing through there. Crazy. But, um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of people sitting out here. Just uh, going to enjoy it. Yeah. Beautiful. Anyway, tomorrow morning we're going to go and uh, watch sunrise over Uluru. Good night. Oh, good morning, guys. So, yeah, we uh, probably got up a tad later than we needed to, actually. But uh, here we are. We were kind of watching Uluru come out of its slumber. It's kind of cool. Yeah. And the next thing we're going to do is go for a bike ride. The flies aren't too bad. Woo! Anyway, we're out here uh, at the Olgas. We've just walked up the Valley of the Winds to the Karu Lookout. Checked it out, it's starting to get pretty hot. So, beaut spot though, pretty beautiful. How good is that? So, this is the rim of Kings Canyon. And uh, we got up real early this morning drove up to the uh, parking lot and then we've walked about 30 minutes to get up here and check this out watching sunrise wow <laughs> just wow it is so so beautiful the color in these rocks is just look at that that red and it, oh just so gorgeous <laughs> It's uh, somewhat breathtaking. This is another one of those places I've uh, wanted to come to for many years. Hang on, where's, where's your background over here? And uh, yeah, here I am. And it's worth, if you come here, if you haven't done it already, it's well worth coming on uh, for sunrise. I imagine sunset's good too, but it'll be blooming hot. It's beautiful temperature at the moment. So we're down in the bottom of one of the canyons. Look at this beautiful water source. And the bird noises, the types of birds there, songs and stuff, gorgeous. Simply spectacular. So we're down in a spot called the Garden of Eden. It's amazing. It's just this wonderful water supply down in the bottom of the canyon. It's an Aboriginal um, men's place. So it's quite special to them. Yeah. Paula doing her thing with the camera. <laughs> uh, 
just amazing. There's a beautiful breeze blowing. And that'll be a waterfall in times of rain. Good morning, everybody. So yeah, I thought I'd show you a little bit of how we're camping and how the setup's working. Um, and some of the things I wanted to talk about in this is one of the big reasons you're going to have problems off-road is over overloading, especially on a extended trip and exp especially when you're... Um, you know doing long distances on very rough roads we so far haven't done a lot of long distances on very rough roads we've done but we've done dirt roads and we're certainly doing off-road and overloading is your biggest uh issue or not having the vehicle set up properly now so with this as i've mentioned in previous videos this is set up so that we can film we can live and i can mechanic so I'm certainly loaded. Um, <clears throat> if it was just a touring trip, <clears throat> pardon me, like many of you guys are doing, you wouldn't need to take a lot of the stuff I've got. And this vehicle would be light. It would be, you know, just absolutely, um, yeah, it'd be doing really well. So you need cover. Um, you need cover because if it starts raining or if it's really windy, you need to be able to get out of that weather. And so that's where this vehicle's been fitted with the Dashi awning. And so I like this setup. So this is like a 270 degree awning, but this flap here comes across, gives you cover over the top of the vehicle. And um, you know, it's not freestanding, but it's really quick and easy to set up. It's got these poles and stuff sitting there. So that gives us cover. Now what we've got as well is awning pieces that can zip on here and give us side protection so that's really good if it's windy you'd set those up so you have a an alcove here and it can keep you dry it can keep you out of the weather and that's a good thing in the back area we had the guys at all four by four spares take the seats out and put this platform in here and that's been absolutely brilliant it gives us small space storage in underneath for some of our camera gear and then we've got our main camera gear in there we've got two cameras audio equipment charging gear and so on in that in that box there we've got this is my clothes bag so i've got only clothes that I need and some a few spares in there. Um, Mrs. Mad Matt's got the same sort of thing. We've got a day pack here just so we, when we're doing our walks. Up the back here we've got um, power supplies, USBs, um, 12 volt Siggy plugs, Anderson plugs. So this one's driving an inverter, this one's driving a the fridge and the um, inverter's down in the bottom here. Be, because this is um, you know, we're using this vehicle only for a few weeks. We haven't permanently mounted our inverter. Up under here, I've got um, a little device. It's called a cradle point. It's for um, boosting our phone service and uh, works absolutely brilliantly. It only boosts data, but it, it um, it's great. And then we've got the 85 litre fridge. I would normally have a smaller fridge, but it's the only fridge I've got. So that's the my Coolman fridge. Now, we don't run a freezer. We're running one as a crisper, so we run it on about six degrees Celsius. And then the other one, uh, the other section we run on two degrees, and that works for us. And it also means we use less battery power out of, um, out of the battery. So that's that's working very good for us down here. Um, actually, I'll come round. We'll, I'll talk to you about th that side when we get to it. Um, we'll keep walking around the vehicle. So in this box here, <clears throat> this is our sort of pull up and grab stuff and then our emergency stuff so that's the awn uh, the awning sides I spoke of for if it gets windy there's two of those down in the bottom here we've got a tripod for our camera um, I can't show it to you it's all packed in there we've got a bag full of winter clothes so big heavy jackets and stuff like that a um, few other odds and sods there's a shower tent and a, the, we've got a little mobile shower we can put in a bucket and that's purely because um, you know uh, after a certain period of time you need to have a shower but we can have a shower with about two or three litres 
litres of water and we've got water for that. Um, in this bucket here we've got emergency food rations and um, just a few consumable things that we might might need um, and just other odds and sods and this is our sort of day-to-day -day sort of food so some man shakes there um, uh, almond milk um, just you know a few basic cooking gears but it's not a heavy bot bag by any stretch down underneath here is vehicle spares so we've got I've got spare alternators wheel bearings um, Ah, oh, fan belts, hoses, the list goes on and on of, of vehicle spares. Some of those are for this vehicle specifically, and some of those are for um, uh, just uh, the job we're, we're going to be doing. Um, up the top here, a jaffa line, um, just some other stuff, and we put our chairs in there. When that's all packed up, that, that um, is really versatile down in here i've got a shovel you always have a shovel easy to access and i've got a sand flag for when we get out into the desert so that's down in there as well um i've got uh air tire inflation stuff down inside that box there as well and we have a tiny little table i'll step back here this is mad Matt's having her coffee for the morning <laughs> um two chairs and a little table we have a fry pan and a saucepan and a, um, oh my coffee's ready, and a little stove. That's all we need for cooking. Um, we can cook uh, gourmet meals of, of a steak and salad. Yeah, we're hopeless cooks. And another bucket full of food stuff. So that sort of, all of that down there is our living stuff that we need m primarily. We're currently collecting rubbish <laughs> because we haven't um, we haven't had opportunity to find a, a suitable rubbish bin. We've got about a uh, week's worth of rubbish collected so far. Um, this is sort of an emergency water supply, so an extra twenty litres there. Um, that was also that's also part of you know if I need it, um, you know, blow it, need to fill the radiator up or something. You need a fair quantity of water. Um, we've got um, under here, got a range of different things. A lot of this stuff is stuff that I need for when we're doing the show um, out in the desert. So my max tracks obviously need, but in that suitcase there is all vehicle spares, just stuff that can fix stuff. A spare battery, blocks of wood uh, that's um, grey with orange flaps there. Um, that's just more stuff that can fix stuff. That other bag up the back there is full of straps and stuff like that. A spare tarpaulin up there. And I've got a high lift jack down under here, bolted into the tray. So um, if we needed that this bag this case here has got full recovery equipment like heaps of recovery equipment um it's got jumper leads it's got welding leads it's got an air compressor it's got battery grinders battery chargers um rattle guns drills drill bits socket sets um yeah heaps of kit in there in that whole box there so that's um in there then down in here this bucket is full of nuts and bolts. <laughs> Strange thing to be carrying, but that's uh, I'm carrying it because with the job we're doing, that's the sort of stuff we would need. Uh, we've got spare oil and um, and so on. We've got um, brake fluid, steering fluid, auto fluid, safety jack. That grey box there is a 65 litre water tank and a winch, 30 metre winch rope basically to use as an extension strap should we need it should you, you know you get bogged out in the middle of somewhere and you've got to do a very long re recovery strap i've got that i've got um, winch extension straps as well as uh, tow rope so i've got i've got a lot of recovery rope uh that i can access if need be so these are things that are actually you wouldn't normally take i'm taking them specific to the job that i'm here to do and then for sleeping quarters we've got the rooftop tent up here now um, so this is gives us our bedding and it allows us to store our bedding in there. It's quick and easy to set up and pack down. Um, the only thing we can't s store in there is our pillows. They don't seem to fit for some reason. Um, but other than that, we've got we've got two sleeping bags. We've got a, a light blanket and a light sheet because you need to be able to sleep whether it's warm weather or freezing cold weather. So you do need to have capacity to deal with that. But all of that bedding can stay up there bar the pillows so that's working quite well 
Um, this locker here just has a, another few small straps and, and odds and sods in it. Um, so here's the fridge side again. So what I've got in here is my primary tool roll. So that's the Atlas um, tool roll. And that is giving me all of my hand tools. So it's behind the driver's seat, so that's a quick grab. If I need to deal with something, I can just open the door, grab it out. Um, that's the drone. When we're traveling, we pack the table in here. We pack our laptop in here and we can charge the laptop while we're traveling. First aid kit ready to go right there. And I charge my drone batteries in under there when I need to. And then there's a few other odds and sods in behind the fridge here. So just um, like you know, things like this, which are, um, you know, just a uh, mat that we can um, you know, use for when we have the shower up or fly and put the drone onto it or something like that. Um, welding mask, hat, um, some stuff like that. We put our pillows up in the top there. And so, um, so that works. So all of that guys is a, a setup that's really basic. And you know, a lot of people just travel, you, you're traveling with way too much gear just way 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 too much gear and that's going to be giving you you're going to use more fuel you're going to get bogged easier you're going to have other dramas and there i don't think there's oftentimes there's i just don't think there's the need for the gear you know so when you're packing really pack and think about what you do need to take there's a couple of things in here which we we probably don't need to have brought but um you know we were packing this on the fly and and you don't always get it right so Anyway, hope that was interesting. Hope that's helpful. And uh, yeah, all right, let's get on with the rest of the video. How good is that, eh? Look at that. That's Ormiston Gorge. So after we left Kings Canyon, we uh, hit the road and, and we headed around to Hermansburg. And from Hermansburg, we got fuel and a couple of supplies at the shop there. And then we decided we'd head down the Fink River Gorge, I think it was called. Well turns out after the floods they've had out here that wasn't going to happen and uh, basically that you know the rivers uh, from what I can gather you normally would drive down the river but um, nobody's been there are a few vehicles may have got half a kilometre down so we're following the tracks anyway long story short we ended up bogged um, it was about 5.30 in the afternoon which is the hottest part of the day the sand was light and fluffy um, yeah, well anyway, long story short, we were bogged hard. Um, you know, diff locks in in the 79, um, aired down. Um, in the end, we got out with, uh, pulled the max tracks out and uh, we were able to get out and get on our way. So that was sort of a drama in the afternoon and from there we just found camp down on another um, another river, uh, which leads, leads into that gorge near Hermansburg. So, and then the next day we headed up into Palm Valley and that was pretty cool. There's these palm trees up there, which um, they just don't, they, they're just a thousand k's from their nearest relative, you know, they're in this gorge. And uh, yeah, it was really cool to go and check those out. And we actually got to do a little bit of genuine fall driving to get in there. Nothing really hard, but you definitely needed low range. And there was a lot of river sand, quite soft stuff as well. So we, uh, we made our way in there and did a few river crossings and whatever, which was really cool. And on the way back out, we came across this Ram, Dodge Ram with his caravan. And he was, he was completely stuck. And it turns out he'd been stuck there for an hour and a half, um, digging and trying to get himself out. So in the end, we uh, hooked the 79 up and um, yeah, we, were, we dragged him out backwards and uh, got him to the rocks where he'd be able to turn around and have a, you know, head back out or do whatever he was going to do so that was a bit of fun but again that was sort of middle of the day it was so hot it was a 40 degree day the sand was just just like powder you know it was um we'd driven through in the morning no dramas at all and to come back out we were aired down lockers on you know it was pretty pretty full on but anyway we got old mate out so that was good and from there we headed up round past um, Gossie's Crater, which is a meteorite crater, and checked that out. Um, it was, again, it was too hot to go for any bushwalks, so we, we didn't do that, but um, it was cool to see it. And then we headed around to where we are now, which is um, just spectacular. And 
we decided, you know, we're just going to have a day off. So basically our day consisted of turning up and setting up camp there we're in the shade. That was lovely until it wasn't. So then we walked from there, around there, across the pond, walked up, and we've sat here, <laughs> read our books, <laughs> watched people swimming and having fun, and here it is at the end of the day, about six o'clock at night, and we're the only people in the place, uh, and uh, yeah, we still haven't left. <laughs> so tomorrow, we're gonna head into Alice Springs and check it all out. Um, we're also thinking about heading into Roma Gorge, which is just a little way up the road. Uh, a bit of forward driving into there, I suspect, but apparently there's some pretty cool, um, uh, I can't even say the word, Aboriginal pictorographers stuff. Um, pictures on rocks um, up in there, so we're going to go and check that out um, and, yeah, head into Alice Springs and then... Uh, yeah, we'll see where we end up after that. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little highlight of our week so far. I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.